What's up, Tang Gang? We are back with another video, and this time I got a very special guest with me, Mr. Uncle Mike. And he was kind enough to join our live stream today. Come on to the channel. Mike, why don't you uh, begin with an introduction? How do we first meet? And tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Hey, what's up, Jess? Thanks so much for having me on. And a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Mike. Uncle, I go by Uncle Mike on my social media. Uh, I'm 40 years old, Oakland, California, born and raised. And uh, I've been kind of been working in the uh, doing a podcast of uh, called uh, called My Podcast Journey and right. random, and random life tips. Mm -hmm. And I met Jesse uh through the manosphere uh or, or red pill group um right the men's self-improvement groups right yes men's self-improvement for sure you know we're, we're definitely not um you know how do you say like want to be labeled uh, i don't want to label myself nor do i want to call jesse the you know manosphere or red pill or anything like that right. but we're right. absolutely a uh, self-improvement group and i met him there and, and it was just an amazing sort of amazing transformation watching Jesse going from, you know, uh, sort of this, you know, uh, this guy in the background that didn't really say, talk too much, but then, you know, really kind of started putting himself out there and really showing a lot of progress from, you know, <laughs> watching one of his, how he used to look into, you know, such a handsome man today. So really proud of uh, where you're at right now. So I wanted to, you know, get on and get a happy opportunity to speak with uh, Jesse on the on this podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. So no, let's get into the topic of the video now. So we're talking about growing up as Asian Americans in Western society. You know, as you know, I live in Maryland, which is on the uh, East Coast, and you live on the West Coast in California. And I'm sure we can relate, you know, both of our childhoods, we almost felt like a little bit of an outsider, we kind of didn't fit in. Because for me, you know, I didn't really fit in with the American kids. I didn't really fit in with, you know, the Asian kids either. It was just like I was stuck in this in between, man. What about you? What, what was your childhood like growing up, you know, in Western society? Man, it was identical to what, you know, you kind of uh, like, like you mentioned, uh, just not really feeling belong mm -hmm. uh, growing up with, uh, with English as a second language, having to take ESL classes. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, ESL classes, right? I mean, you know, it's like uh, because we were all, we were, when we were at home, we spoke Chinese, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and it was almost like a requirement when we come home, we would have to speak Chinese with our parents. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't really get to, you know, speak English or we were lacking uh, some of that at home to kind of improve ourselves that way. So when we come, uh, when we would, when we go to school, we would, we would fall behind. So I have to take a supplemental course in ESL just to kind of uh, catch up with the rest of the students in class. So it was definitely difficult. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was definitely difficult. But I will say, you know, uh, I mean, you know, it's it's part of life, you know, we, you know, we, we, we overcome these challenges. And uh, I will say I'm proud of still being bilingual and oh yeah being able to, to, to speak my mother tongue because mm -hmm. i'll tell you you know like you know it is certainly very useful to me right now at this age and uh you know i highly recommend anybody out there um don't lose your you know your mother tongue uh <laughs> and keep practicing even if you have to talk to your grandparents your relatives or, or if you need to learn a second language, I highly recommend anybody out there to learn a second language now, ASAP. Oh, yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, I would bring, you know, all these Chinese dishes. Just just so you guys know, Mike and I are both Chinese, but I bring, you know, pork sure. buns to school and people would look at me funny like, what is that guy eating, right? And it's like, you know, us being part of, you know, the men's self-improvement groups, it almost forced us to learn social skills, you know, be able to read body language and almost integrate into that you know, Western society. And, you know, I made videos about going out solo myself and for a lot of embarrassing nights and, you know, a lot of miscalibrated interactions, but 
I kept showing up and I kept showing up and eventually, you know, I started making new friends and learned what worked and what didn't. So what was that journey like for you, you know, being able to you know, integrate and make friends here in the West? Um, you know, fortunately for me, uh, growing up in a uh, in Oakland, California, the Asian community was fairly, you know, not too bad. It wasn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know how, how Massachusetts is, how, how it was for you in the East Coast, uh, where yeah. if you were the only Asian kid in your classroom, uh, fortunately for me, we, you know, we had a good diverse, like, oh, geez, it had to be at least 30% Asian kids. Okay. If, it, if it wasn't Chinese, it was Vietnamese, Cambodian, Filipino. Okay. Uh, so we, we had a very diverse, uh, you know, and then it was, it, 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 integrating wasn't that difficult. Actually, it was, it was kind of nice because we were able to kind of like form little cliques, mm -hmm. Asian group. The black kids, the Mexican kids, the white kids, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when we, when I grew up, it was, it wasn't as bad uh, as I, as uh, you know, I, I want to say maybe Middle America would have it, or maybe mm -hmm. East Coast. I wasn't, I'm not sure what the demographics is. It, it is out, out there for you. Were you, were you um, in Massachusetts? Oh no, no, I, I was in Maryland, dude. Maryland. Uh, but, you know, right now I live in Frederick, you know, being one of the very few Asians who live in the area, you know, it can be a bit awkward sometimes, too. But, you know, it's I don't like, you know, my skin color, my background, you know, dictate who I am and who I want to be. And, you know, I just use this things to my advantage. And, you know, like too many Asian guys, you know, they have this victim mentality that, you know, because of their upbringing, you know, it's holding them back. And, you know. Yeah, that may be a factor, but that's something you can overcome, you know. Your identity is malleable, like I always talk about. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've uh, certainly uh, realized that much later when I, uh, when I grew up, I, and, and that was kind of like one of the pitfall, pitfalls I fell into was because I, was, uh, I had a clique of Asians, you know, oh, yeah. and we all would, it was almost kind of like, you know, uh, we all came together and we all uh, voiced our displeasures about uh, growing up Asian and, and you know, oh, you know, they, they are, um, there's something against us, they're, they're against us, you know, and, and you know, so we kind of had like a little small sounding board that always mm -hmm. just kind of said that same thing, like, oh man, uh, or, or, or we would get teased about, you know, oh, you, all you Asians are this, all you Asians are that, and short and, and timid and, and, you know, all the, all the bad stereotypes, you know, and we would have to defend ourselves, you know, which, you know, got into fights, you know, over racial, whatever, uh, and stuff like that. It was, it was pretty, uh, it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of violent mm. growing up in Oakland with, uh, you know, uh, growing up with Mexicans and, and Blacks. Mm. And it was, yeah, I mean, it, 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 a lot of times we got into a lot of school fights and stuff over there. Dang. So it was, well, you're still here now, so you made it out okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's funny because looking back now, you know, a lot of the Black kids that we used to beef with, you know, it's like they're still around and I commend them. Like, I, you know, it's like I see them like, hey, what's up? What's up, Dante? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we were still, we're, you know, we kind of look back and laugh at it, but back mm -hmm. then it was, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in it, it, you're in the thick of it, it's very, you know, stressful, uh, but, but yeah. All right. All right. So let's briefly talk about entrepreneurship because, you know, in our cultures, it's not very common to work for yourself because think, you know, our parents, their generations, they always taught us, you know, you want to be attached like a big name brand, you know, like Microsoft, Samsung, Apple, you know, working for yourself, having your own company, having your own brand is almost discouraging. So, you know, I had to overcome that when I decided to become self-employed after working in corporate America for 10 years and basically start working for myself. And I want to uh, hear about your entrepreneurial journey right now. I know you said you want to get into real estate. Tell me more about that. Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, I think, I mean, for all you guys out there, I am I am 42 years old. I'm going to be 43. I have been working in the corporate world for quite some time. Uh, mm -hmm. It was interesting. I Well, I first started off as an elementary school teacher. I did that for a few years. And I, out of family obligation, 
family pressures, which, which we'll get into a little bit, um, I was uh, required or not, not so I was kind of obligated to like quit that job, something that I was really passionate about to help with the family business, you know, help start jump, jump start this entrepreneurial uh, business with my family, which it was kind of strange. It was something that I did not want to do because I was thinking like, oh, I wanted to become a, uh, a teacher. Uh, however, working in the family business taught me to learn, I mean, taught me to love entrepreneurship, taught me to love uh, being my own boss and, and all those things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I learned this a bit late in my 30s that I, um, I wasn't ready for it. And so I got back into the corporate world. And when I got into the corporate, well, this is when I got into the uh, corporate world, I'm sorry. And I worked for uh, a big, big name bank and I was working for them for, oh geez, five, six years. I loved it to be, to be quite honest, because it literally was like this big company would, would take care of me in terms of they, they pay, they pay me good. They give me benefits. Uh, I didn't have to worry about anything. However, now that I'm in this corporate world for the past almost 10 years now, I am really, really just like, oh, like, no, no more, no more. I don't see myself doing this for another 20 years, 30 years, you know, like working for the man, like, you know, is, is this all there is? You know, you work your work, you work for 40 years, 50 years, uh, you know, just to get like a little bit of 401k. Uh, and, and so you get retired in sunset and, and by then I'm already like 60 something years old. I don't even know when the retirement age will be like, I, you know, and, and that just, as I've gotten become 42 years old now, that has like, it has really dawned on me that that is just not the, not the way to go. And, uh, you know, it, it unfortunately it took for my mother to pass away. Uh, back in 2020 for me to realize that, you know what, this is, uh, now I understand what my mother was talking about. Now I understand why uh, my mom wanted me to, me to be my own boss and jumpstart this family business and do all these things. So um, here I am. She recommended me uh, to try real estate and real estate had always been an interest to me. It just wasn't uh, something viable at the time because it requires 100% commission. But, you know, if it is a passion that you really want to get into, you're not going to let something like that stop you. So this is what I this is what I uh, what I did. I I kind of carved out a little bit of my time after I cut, get off of work to study for the real estate courses and study for the real estate exam. You know, passed all my courses, got my license, passed the state exam, and you know, most recently joined a, a, a real estate brokerage. So now, so now I'm actually working full time, you know, nine to five for the corporate world. But at the same time, I have my own business that I carved aside and I, I try to focus on it, you know, at least, I don't know, one, two hours a day, you know, just to, just to focus on it, just to like, you know, if it's something that you really enjoy doing and it's something you're passionate about, you wouldn't mind carving out an hour of your time, of your 24 hours of the day to kind of focus on that, right? Definitely. And I think, you know, one of our uh, issues with our cultures is, you know, everyone's kind of a copycat. They want to, everyone just wants to copy what works. You know, they're kind of like sheep running off the herd. Um, it, yeah. I think culture, you know, kind of, it's kind of discourages creativity a little bit. So I think, you know, that's just one of the issues, you know, we have. And that's why, you know, I, started working for myself because you know i wanted to spread my message to the world through the camera and that's just not really something you can do working for another man yeah 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 i wanted to, to, to kind of ask you how you kind of uh, fell out of corporate america fell out the corporate life to you know like what made you uh jesse to want to you know start doing all of that well what was, was it something about corporate america that just really turned you off Oh, yeah. A lot of things. I think, you know, the limitations you face working corporate, you know, 
the amount of hours is limited. Um, overtime is limited. They tell you when to be at work, when not. Uh, you walk around with your resume kind of like a beggar. Oh, please hire me. Please hire me. Boss over your head, pushing you around. Crappy coworkers sometimes. And, you know, you're just kind of a cog in the wheel. So, you know, I wanted freedom and I'm working towards financial freedom right now. It's very difficult, but I think it will be worth it in the end. So, you know, depending on how things go, I'm just hoping never to go back to corporate America again. It's been a blast working for myself. It's been very difficult, but, you know, I will, hopefully I will achieve financial freedom one day. Oh, no, you definitely, you definitely will. You definitely will. If it's something that you're, you know, if it's definitely a goal that's up there, you're definitely going oh, yeah. to get for like, sure. Like we always talk about, you know, working 40, 50 years for another man, basically to help his passion instead of your own. You know, it's, it's kind of backwards to me where you work for yourself. You know, you can achieve that freedom much sooner rather than relying on, you know, the retirement fund from a job. So exactly, exactly. Like, and if you're kind of uh, focusing on your, in, on, your, on your passion, it doesn't even feel like work. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, oh. I, I, I'm, I definitely think you're, you know, this is a, 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 like a personal goal. Of this is, is uh, really beneficial for, for anybody out there uh, yeah. to kind of, you know, not just, oh, you know, I'm, getting, I'm collecting a paycheck, you know, and I, I have just enough to, you know, go shop and go buy some stuff for myself. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, that's just, this is a, you know, you're not looking at the big picture, you know, if that's just all you're focused on. So. Yeah, so um, I want to uh, talk briefly about, you know, our parents because, you know, they kind of shaped us growing up. You know, I had a very strict traditional parents and, you know, growing up, I, I resented them a little bit because, you know, they were tough on me because they always wanted me to get A's in school. They always wanted me to excel academically in sports. They wanted me to excel if I were at home playing video games or everyone else my age was out being social. You know, they'd say something about, hey, why are you at home playing games when everyone else your age is out being social? Because in their day, they didn't have video games. They had no choice but to, you know, go out there, play basketball and mingle and hang out with each other. So, you know, I think, you know, stuff like social media, video games has, you know, diminished a lot of young folks social skills but you know i may have resented my parents back then but now i know you know they just gave me tough love and helped shape me into who i am today so why don't you tell us a little bit about your folks growing up uh well uh growing up my parents were man uh, we had a pretty dysfunctional uh upbringing mm -hmm. uh you know I, I mean, everybody's got issues, though. Every right. family got it got issues. You know, I'm not trying to say, uh, you know, my my family was terrible or anything like that. And, and I do have resentment towards both of them growing mm. up. Mm. Uh, but you know, like it comes to a point in time, you know, you you kind of have to like say, hey, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. You know, like you're just gonna have to deal with it and fix it, or or, or you know, like try to move forward with these issues, you know, but uh, I certainly did have a lot of resentment, uh, you know, because my parents were divorced. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had only a single parent raising us. Uh, my mother was not around uh, for the younger years of my life because of um, court restrictions and things like that. Even though she wanted to be in my life, she couldn't because uh, court says she can't because she couldn't take care of us, that, that sort of thing. And now, as I've gotten older, um, I realized, like, you know, it wasn't like she can't, couldn't, you know, it was because, uh, you know, the, the relationship she had with my dad was just not good. It was not conducive for, uh, for us to be around. So uh, we kind of, uh, you know, I, I resented her a little bit because once she came back into my life, she tried to, like, Tiger mommy, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to come to come hard. Tiger mom, and you better have all these good grades. You better, you know, do good in school. You better, oh, you, you know, once you graduate, you're not gonna be a, you're not gonna be a school teacher. You're gonna come and work for me, you know, and mm -hmm. blah, blah blah blah. So, you know, I certainly resented her a lot. But again, you know, like kind of looking back now, now that I'm older, now that she's passed away. Man, she, I mean, there, it was really a blessing that, you know, she, I had the mom that I had because I wouldn't be where I am 
today without her, you know, like it's, it was almost kind of like um, our parents battle tested us. You oh, know? yeah. Like really, you know, put uh, the, the pressure on so she could make it she could make a diamond out of us, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And we uh, in a way we've kind of, uh, you know, I've uh, became a, a much better than you know, than I would have if, I, if she hadn't been around or if she wasn't as hard on me or our, or um, me and my brother as she would have been. But uh, yeah, I mean, I throw that question back to you. What about you? Um, as far as, you know, uh, yeah, I, I've had a bit of a tiger mom too, but, you know, like I was saying, you know, it's just, you know, tough love, you know, they meant well, you know, they may have scolded at you or, yelled at you at times, but they, they just wanted the best for you. And, you know, that was their way of showing that, you know, they love you and they just want you to be successful. They don't want you to make the same mistakes that they made in the past. There's a bit of, you know, a generational and a cultural gap, but they, you know, they meant well. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, you know, I, I think every parent doesn't, you know, when they have a kid, they don't get instructions mm -hmm. on how to raise a kid. Mm hmm. So they really just kind of, they kind of wing it and they yeah. pretend they know, they pretend they know. And it, it just, it, it, it irks us growing up to come to terms to realize that they actually don't know everything. Right. Right. You know, and when we reach, you know, reach, in the cultural gap. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When we reach our 18s, 19s and we look at our parents differently, we look at them and be like, Man, I know you're just blowing smoke up my butt. Yeah, I know you're just making stuff up, you know. And, yeah. and then they they put the whole "you listen to me because I'm your mom" or "you listen to me because I'm your dad," you yeah. know. You respect me, you know, and that sort of thing, and you just go along with it, knowing that uh, they weren't always right. Uh, but uh, yeah, that cultural uh, mm -hmm. that cultural upbringing and that generational upbringing definitely, uh, you know, uh, didn't help the whole, you know. Um, us seeing eye to eye on things okay so. cool so um as you know we met through the men's dating and self-improvement space with that being said i want to talk briefly about that in our cultures because in chinese culture right there's not a whole lot of pressure for the man you know the family the parents kind of take care of that for them it, almost like a pre-arranged marriage similar to indian middle eastern cultures where families will get together and oh my son will be great for your daughter and vice versa. Almost like, you know, it's handed to the guy on a platter. You know, he doesn't have to do a whole lot of self-improvement or anything to basically, you know, get married or get a girlfriend. Whereas, you know, here in the West, we actually need to do the self-improvement. We have to put ourselves out there. We have to shoot our shot. We need to be able to handle rejection. And we need to, you know, become basically the best version of ourselves. So... Yeah, man, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, man. I mean, it's true. You know, yeah. it was funny. Till my mom's uh, dying day, she was constantly trying to set me up with, like, friend's daughter. So-and-so's got a daughter. You want to go, you know, I want you to meet her. She's really nice. She's, uh, you know, really hardworking and all that stuff. And, you know, she always wanted to uh, kind of be involved in my dating, which I didn't understand because, you know, growing up, uh, as a as a American born Chinese, you know, growing up in American society, it's like no, I find the one who I want. You know, I right. I don't need your help in this department. Uh, but I understand she was only trying to help. Same thing with my dad. They were both trying to like set me up with somebody, somebody. Right. And they just didn't understand because in their in their time, that's how they did it. That's you know, their family, and they know some other family, and you know, uh, if they're well off or whatever, you know, like they the men especially the men, not the women, the men mm -hmm. would, would really get um, everything kind of handed to them. Yeah, yeah, it was easy for them. It's not it like here in yeah. the West, like, I'm not saying I'm a victim or anything, but we kind of almost have to prove ourselves, you know, we got to shoot our shot, we need to be able to handle rejection and over oh, yeah. coach anxiety, look our best, have good style, be in good shape. All oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think, uh, you know, um, I'm, and I'm not knocking how they did it either. We're not knocking how they did it either, uh, you know, back in their day. But, you know, being here as men in the, you know, in America, 
Mm -hmm. um, we absolutely do need to work and prove oh, ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, like that, that's what makes us uh, have value, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and, you know, not rely on our parents, not rely on, you know, my parents' money and that sort of thing, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, so how, uh, how did you and your girlfriend meet just out of curiosity? Oh, uh, well, me and my girlfriend met through, uh, we joined uh, a, a group that goes to EDM festivals and we enjoy EDM music. And, right. you know, me, me being at my age, um, you know, a lot of my friends that I grew up with who I used to attend these festivals with, they kind of all grew up. They all kind of, I wouldn't say grow up, but they kind of like settled down found wives, have married kids and all that, you know, and, and me being 42, I'm just still one of those single guys out there that are not really ready to settle down, I guess, mm -hmm. or not so much ready. It's just- it's, So you're a bit of a late bloomer is what you're saying. You're a bit of oh, a late Oh yeah, super late, super late. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm full bloom yet, man. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still behind, uh, but I will say that, uh, you know, I joined these EDM groups, you know, just to go to these festivals and, uh, Somehow I met this uh, lady that enjoyed the same type of music that I did. And then we started, uh, we exchanged information and we started hanging out more and more. And um, we've been together for officially one year. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very super, super ha happy, super excited that, you know, I got to spend uh, the holidays with her this year. So. Uh, hopefully there's more of that to come. Well, yeah. What about you? Are you single or, you know? Um, I'm still single, but right now just trying to do the work and, you know, forge myself into, you know, the highest value man that I can be. But I definitely, you know, still been shooting my shot and been uh, on a few dates over the summer. But, you know, right now I'm just trying to become a high value man so that, you know, I can eventually attract a high value woman too. You know, I've still got time. I'm in my uh, late 20s. Not oh, quite yet 30, so you got, got you, you've got plenty of time. No need to, you know, I will say this as a you know 42 year old man, mm -hmm. you know, speaking to your in your late 20s, you got plenty of time. I would say really enjoy the process of oh, growing. Yeah. Enjoy the process of like hanging out with people and, and meeting new people. And you know, if you really uh build a kind of like an interesting life. Oh yeah, definitely. The, you know, you will attract the right person, you know, not just any old person, you know, like, you know, and, and I'm sure you will attract many people, but you know, it's like now you get to have your pick of the litter, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and, and, and this kind of speaks to how this whole Manosphere thing, you know, we, you know, fell into was like, like, you know, like it, it, it we, I, I think a lot of us always came from this sort of scarcity mindset, you know, oh, like, yeah. oh, find the right one, you gotta, you gotta find that perfect person, you know, uh, you know, and it was kind of interesting because uh, in the whole manosphere, you know, you see, you see women, uh, we, we, t we hear this peripherally, women always get their pick of the litter, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, they're, you know, the moment they're born, you know, it's just like, they got men lined up, ready to, you know, take them out. Sure. You know, we should, and, and the whole, you know, this whole manosphere thing, what, what that has taught me is that we should sort of almost kind of have that same mentality. Mm -hmm. We are the prize. Right, right. And we, you know, and if we build ourselves, you know, high enough, you know, and be high value enough, you know, we can have our pick of the litter too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, you know, that is the one thing that uh, uh, the manosphere. <laughs> kind of area has, has uh, taught me. Um, but uh, how long have you been in the Manosphere? You know, um, and I don't really like calling it Manosphere uh, because yeah, yeah, there yeah. are a few people who will get the wrong idea and a few people who, you know, kind of have the, a little bit of victim mentality. But as far as the men's self-improvement space, I'd say a year and a half or so. What about you? Oh, wow. Year and a half. Mm-hmm. Was there something that specific that made you say, hey, I want to, you know, I, I need to get into this, uh, not manosphere, I'm sorry, but the men's self-improvement? Um, a lot of things, you know, I wanted answers to, you know, why uh, I was miserable in the past, why I was having the oh issues God. that I was having. And 
you know, the men's self-improvement space it gave a lot of answers to my unanswered questions. Oh, uh, yeah. That was, uh, that, that, that was exactly what happened to me. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was interesting because I kept on, it, I mean, you know, like we're not, I, you know, like looking at us right now, like you're not a bad looking dude. I'm not a bad looking dude. But my self-esteem was like not there. Like I, I want to say, I want to say right after high school, right after I graduated from college, like it was my self-esteem like tanked. It like it bottomed out hard, mm -hmm. um, you know, from like, I want to say from 22, 23, all the way up to 32, 33, mm -hmm. like those 10 years, like it was just like the darkest times and mm -hmm. most no girlfriend. Like I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know how to uh, like any girl that I was talking to that I had a indication that was attracted to me like flamed out so fast like after two dates or something like that and right. I could not understand what it was mm -hmm. and it was literally for these 10 years it was just like the dark ages for me like, mm, a decade wow yeah it was a decade of it and and uh, I think it took for yeah like it, it, it literally I kept there was this one girl that I was like so like head over heels for and then like she didn't improve herself to me that like she was a good option. Okay. I was just really head over heels for her, mm -hmm. you know, just because like, just based on looks, just like, right, her, I'm right. like oh, she's so pretty and da, 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 and, and I, I felt so hard for her, but it's like, she didn't like reciprocate it, but she certainly enjoyed my attention. She certainly was like, oh, you know, like she'll, she'll kind of throw me breadcrumbs or something like that just to keep, keep me, keep leading me on. And I kept on like chasing after her. And it mm -hmm. took for me, finally, I was just like, kind of, I had it, I had it, you know, like I kind of had it like, you, you know, tell me you like me now or, or, you know, I'm not talking to you forever. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of gave her an ultimatum, which completely backfired, mm -hmm. completely backfired, completely turned her off and like just ghosted me. Mm -hmm. And I, that was the final straw. <laughs> right. That was the final straw for me. And I totally have to, I remember like it was yesterday that I Googled, uh, why do I keep getting rejected on, mm. uh, on, in Google? Like I had to Google it, you know? And that's when it, I was introduced, like Google introduced me to, you know, all these like uh, red pill authors and, you know, this book called The Game. Oh yeah. This book called, uh, uh, this book how to, uh, by Corey Wayne and all oh, these yeah. things. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah, the first uh, video thing that popped up uh, on the Google uh, listing was, you know, how to win her back in seven try seven principles to win the X back and blah, blah, blah. And pretty much fell into that rabbit hole. Wow. And, and, and it, like you, it answered all of the questions that I was like, oh, mm. that's why I've been like, you know, depressed and scaring people off right. and... Right. Because you really do, um, if you're not in a good mental state, if you're not in an abundance mindset, mm -hmm. you are, uh, how do you say, it? you exude that. Like, if yeah. you're scarcity, you know, like you're desperate, like it, it, it sticks to you like a like bad cologne. Mm -hmm. like it stinks and everybody can sense it, guy or girl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like that, that it, yeah, it, it really, uh, you know, yeah. Once I fell into that space and, and learned about it, really dived into it, like I really realized that like, oh, I really need to change my mindset. I need to change how I think. I need to change how I look, how I feel. Mm. Uh, I need to change my life. Like I need to turn this around, you know, make myself more interesting. Um, uh, and, and sure enough, once I started doing that, results came like immediately. Immediately. Yeah, so. Uh, you know, not to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, manosphere isn't uh, toxic, though. Mm. You know, like, because, yeah, oh, there's a lot uh, of that going on. And, uh, incel, yeah, that's that's definitely toxic. Yeah, that's a lot of toxic stuff. And, I'm, you know, I I'm sure you've encountered it, too, where we're yeah. on there, we're, we're asking genuine questions, authentic mm -hmm. questions. And then, you know, you get these people commenting in uh, uh, and being... Hate, yeah. yeah, just being uh, pessimistic, hateful, yeah. 
just, you know, not in the right, right mindset. And, you know, uh, I, I, I try my best to tune those out. Yeah. And I'm going to tie this back to, you know, our original topic and self-improvement. Unfortunately, a lot of Asian guys are, you know, the doomers, the black pills, you know, because, you know, they're socially awkward. Maybe their parents didn't exactly raise them right. You know, they come from a different ethnic background. And, you know, we have a lot of er uh, negative stereotypes as Asian men, you know, we're perceived as shy, introverted, not outspoken, not very manly. And I think, you know, guys like us need to spread the message more and break those stereotypes because, you know, other Asian guys, they have so much potential to, you know, like they can do a lot of good in the world. It's just, you know, they got to change their mindset and start doing different things. If, you know, if you know, they're a basement dweller playing video games at home in their parents' basement, they're not going to get anywhere, but they have so much potential. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Uh, it, it, and, and it's it's tough too because parents they don't parents today or Asian parents mm -hmm. they don't even know how to like communicate to us anymore. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, they, you know they don't know how because they just feel almost kind of lost. You know, and 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 certainly I feel you know this um, men's self improvement. If a lot more people started subscribing to it, you know, yeah, we can. You know, it's almost like a brotherhood that we can try to like help each other. Um, so I, I hope uh, you know, you know, we can continue and try to spread the word. I, I've been trying to do it. I've been certainly trying to help my friends and you know introduce it. But a lot of times, you know, they a lot of times they aren't ready to. You oh know? yeah. They they they, they think that uh, they'll figure out when they figure it out. But I think it's uh, it's. Uh, yeah, it's certainly when I, it's, there's the saying that's, that, that goes when the student is ready to learn, the teacher will right. appear. Right. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I hope everybody will kind of, you know, put down their remote controllers, you know, the video game controllers and, and kind of look up and, and, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, uh, we'll, there's going to be a resource for them to kind of, you know, help these, you know, so-called like incels and you know these kind of people to you know kind of wake up from their slumber oh yeah i mean speaking of like you know stuff like video games or anime i'm sure both of us grew up with a lot of that stuff like the walking dead or attack on titan that should really inspire folks because you know it shows how humans need for survival you know how much uh humans can are capable of you know when their lives are literally at risk so Stuff like that should inspire more young folks to self-improve because, you know, if those people can survive in those conditions or literally, literally fighting for survival, well, that should be the mindset that, you know, young guys have too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's funny. They just, uh, when you say Attack on Titan or Walking Dead, you know, a lot of times it's just like people just look at that as, a, that as entertainment, but that absolutely should be some sort of inspiration. Yeah, there. it's inspiring. Yeah, it's inspiring to, you know, kind of, yeah, man, Rick, Rick Grimes, is he still on the, is he still on the, uh, uh, he, he appeared in the last episode, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Oh, they, they, I they're Titan's almost over too, but man, those, those were great shows. They were, I, I, man, I gave up watching Walking Dead, I, I think, at the point where, let's see, uh, Rick, Rick's group was going to, fight with Negan's group. All right, All Out War, yeah, yeah. Yeah, All Out War, and then, um, oh, man, I, I think I, I stopped watching after that because I think after they killed off Glenn, <laughs> I was like, man, forget this show, forget this, man, I'm tired of this, you know? Like, they killed off the one Asian guy that I really was like, he's the man, he's the man, he, he, he got the white girl. He's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he's a man, and I was just like, "Yeah, okay, I'm done with this show." But right. but it was a great show. It was a great show. Uh, uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that was a great anime too. Was there any other anime that uh, you know you were a fan? Um, of? Not at this uh, moment, but like, I also uh, wanted a few more things before uh, we end this live stream. So, like, as far as you know, pushing your comfort zone. Something I did recently to push my comfort zone was uh, salsa dancing because, you know, 
it's very interactive. And as the man, you kind of have to lead the woman while you're dancing. And also speaking on camera on YouTube, you know, and sometimes you do have to look a little stupid for starting something out. You know, my first few videos, edits were awkward, cuts were awkward. When I started dancing, you know, my movements were awkward. Thing with, you know, approaching too and going out, my first few interactions were really awkward too. So what are some things you use to, you know, push your comfort zone? I'd like to uh, hear some of that. I think the most important thing for me was to understand that we're all going to look stupid. Oh, yeah. And we're going to have to be okay with that mm -hmm. and uh, be able to laugh at ourselves right. for looking stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, you know, even the best salsa dancer, the best mm -hmm. NBA player, the best football player, you know, they had to look really stupid in the beginning. You know, even Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan got cut in his right. high school high school team, you know, and that broke him, you know, like that, you know, like he cried in his room all day, uh, you know, after he got cut, but he came out of that you know, like so much, uh, so much stronger, like, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be the best damn uh, basketball player ever. So it's like everybody at some point looks stupid, you know, and your uh, our best, uh, my best advice is to just let that roll off your shoulder and, oh, just, yeah. laugh at, and just laugh at yourself and get back up and keep going, you know, and I commend you for, you know, uh, just constantly putting yourself in front of a camera. Mm. you know i don't even do that enough you know like i seriously don't uh this is my second time ever doing a uh live stream oh okay I, I am not comfortable you know uh being in front of camera and, and, and you know talking to, to you i usually just do it all over the uh the mic on my phone or mm -hmm. i do my podcast mm -hmm. so this right here is all new to me but i welcome it you know yeah i'm gonna look a little stupid yeah i'm gonna do a little whatever you know whatever but you know, it's it's cool, and we can only get better from here. We can only go, you know, oh, onward, yeah. onward, and we might have a little bit of hiccup, but still, we're you know we're on a trajectory going up this way. As long as we keep going up, as long as we keep doing it, we'll we'll keep you know improving. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, especially for me at at my age, like, I mean, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Nobody, I'm just an old ass dude. Like, I'm just an old guy nobody's yeah. gonna yeah they, two thoughts about me anyway so so yeah yeah um, um, what, 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 what would you what would one of your best advice be uh, for those that, uh, out there watching and listening yeah i think uh it's about time we wrap this up so it doesn't matter what ethnic background you are you know do not have a victim mentality that oh i was dealt a bad hand oh it's because i'm chinese or whatever, you know, you can be successful, you can learn and adapt, you know, it's just, yeah, these were the hands you were dealt, okay, so what are you actually going to do about it, you know, what are you, what can you control, what can't you control, so do the best with what you can control, and, you know, basically don't let your upbringing hold you back is what I want everyone to know, and what I want to end this with, is there anything that you want to add to it? No, uh, I think you said it right there, Jesse, that, you know, Everybody gets one life, gets one yeah. shot. And, you know, whatever it is that you're dealt with, you know, you work with it. And, uh, you know, you, you know, you let the chips fall where they may. And, and, you know, you make the most out of it. And that's that's all I could, you know, that's all I could say about that. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for coming on. And let's give a big shout out for Uncle Mike for joining us today. You can uh, check out his podcast in the description below. Follow him on IG as well. And I'll see you guys on the next one, all right? Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for having me.